Hello, everyone. My name is Autumn Williams, and I am from Ashoka. So I want you to raise your hand if you've ever heard of Ashoka and don't think that it's an Indian restaurant. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we are the largest network of social entrepreneurs around the world with over 3,000 individuals with system-changing ideas. So before I was at Ashoka, I was a little kid that grew up here in LA, in South Central, specifically in Watts, and I wanted to be a rocket scientist. So I loved science fairs and the math Olympics and everything that was tech-y and STEM-y. And unfortunately, there were not a lot of quality math and science classes in my neighborhood. And there weren't after-school programs that were really pushing me to explore math and science and how to be a rocket scientist. So um, I was told when I was a kid that it was very unlikely for me to have the interest that I had because of my background. And I was lucky enough to have a village and a support system that celebrated what I was excited about and said, hey, you know what? Go on for it, Autumn. You're going to be the little brown kid with huge hair that wants to be a rocket scientist, but do it anyway. So I went to Stanford. I worked on small satellites. And I was the only chocolate drop in my research groups that was really interested in math and science and that was working on aeronautics and astronautics. So it wasn't enough for me to be celebrated. I went to connect and multiply out my work. So I always go back to my background in engineering, and I think about the first law of thermodynamics. Energy can't be created or destroyed. It's converted. So you don't just make ice melt. Thermal energy is converted. Uh, and that kind of got me to what I do at Ashoka. We try to create a world full of change makers or individuals that think that they can have the self-permission to create change, or not create change, but convert change somehow, because change is a type of energy. So we started doing this in 1980 by looking for individuals with system-changing ideas. So it could be figuring out how to use rats to sniff out landmines, or how to give small loans to people that traditionally didn't have access to funding, or microfinance. And we celebrate those folks by giving them the title of a social entrepreneur. And before that was a major, or before there were convenings on social entrepreneurship, we were finding these individuals and celebrating what they did and also sharing living stipends with them. And the idea is that we support systems change by spotting patterns in what these 3,000 social entrepreneurs around the world are doing. And a very interesting pattern that we noticed was that over 90% of these individuals had a change-making experience before they were 20 years old. So as we connected all of these social entrepreneurs, we started spotting that even more and more and more. And we realized that in order to build a world of change makers, we could not just work with these elite adults, these over 3,000 fellows that were labeled social entrepreneurs in 88 countries. We realized that we had to somehow cultivate that kind of change making in young people. And instead of just selecting individuals, we started selecting ecosystems in schools and looking for schools that were cultivating change making in an influential way, in an innovative way, through systems and culture, and through just interesting ways that you can try to make a young person think, hey, I can be a change maker, and multiply out that work. Because it's not enough just to have 3,000 individuals around the world that are doing something interesting. It has to be multiplied out in order to cultivate that kind of change. So we have found these schools around the world and we have 172, as of last week, actually, when I was in Johannesburg, finding our 172nd school in the Sakani Township. And now we're connecting all of those schools together the same way that we connected our fellows together. And we found that the way to do it is digitally, because young people are communicating with each other through their selfies and through FaceTiming each other. And they're finding ways to figure out what change making looks like in Brooklyn, how that can work in Mumbai and then how that can work in New Orleans. So we're connecting that together and multiplying out the work so that hopefully we will have a world of change makers and we won't have to wait 35 years like we did to find these over 3,000 Ashoka fellows. And I'd like to think that in order for us to continue change making in our everyday lives, all of us are here because we understand change making, but that's not enough. A room full of us that are celebrating what we do is not enough. We have to connect what we're doing and multiply it out. Um, a cool place where we're finding change making and change maker schools is in Haiti. And during the Haitian Revolution, right before it actually happened, a, a French historian noticed that something was happening 
every time there were revolutions where there is a colony. And he said, all that is needed is that great man that nature owes its vexed children. Where is he or she, I like to think. So I hope that you all can answer that and say that great person is here. And you can multiply out the work of change making digitally so that we create a world full of change makers. Thank you. Thank you.